I felt inspired to make a little presentation to keep a speech about the relationships between yoga and parapsychology, given also the fact that there come some workshops which are of parapsychological type, like Yoga Nidra and Lucid Dreaming, Parapsychology, the chapter on clairvoyance, Parapsychology, the chapter on radiesthesia and radionics, and such things. And I wanted to give a clear understanding of why we do those things in Agama, why do we present them to the world, and what is their relevance in general in the study of spirituality and in the study of yoga. So, parapsychology, we have to say from the very beginning, is a very strange science. In the 1960s and especially 70s, parapsychology has enjoyed a very high popularity. It was experiments on psychic science were valid ever since the middle of the 19th century, both in France and in England, mostly referring to mediumnistry, hypnosis, altered states of consciousness and others. But at that time, this was not a coherent science and it did not have the name of parapsychology. Sometimes some people also use the name psychotronics for it, like psychoelectronics, a hybrid between psych psychology and electronics. That's a less inspired name because the truth is that we talk about the psychology of paranormal and psychic phenomena of ab a sort of abnormal psychology because if you speak about telepathy, it sounds like abnormal to do telepathy while it's very beautiful and much higher resonance and generally the study of a lot of exceptional phenomena. The relevance of parapsychology is very great because as I said it a hundred times in the last years, the biggest problem for the modern man is his or her lack of faith. People say, if I would know that I survive after death, if I would know for sure, scientifically, that there is survival of my consciousness after death, and that I perhaps reincarnate, and that there are consequences of my actions in this body, in this life, such as the law of karma, then I would act in a different way. I would take some decisions. Many people would say, I would even study these things. I would want to know everything there is to be known. I would go deeper. Other people even say, I would give my life 100% to these concerns because they seem to me to be way more important than A, B, C, a lot of other trite things of daily life. And that is precisely why such knowledge has a very heavy karmic impact. Such knowledge is very screened and very much filtered according to the principles of what I called in some of the yoga lectures here in Agama, I called that factor the wall of silence or the law of silence. Buddha, 25 centuries ago, has defined clearly that the thing which characterizes the human condition mostly, what makes the human beings be just humans, mere humans, what makes the human beings suffer and be prisoners, is ignorance. And therefore knowledge, true knowledge, would be liberation. True knowledge would be freedom from this ignorance and from this imprisonment. That is precisely why this knowledge does not come at a light cost. 
we can find the technology by which we can burn the coal in a better way. And so one kilo of coal, instead of producing, I don't know how many gigacalories, it produces double that amount of gigacalories or something. No, that's technology. That's science. That science can make our life easier. Even that one is karmically meaningful. Because the more the technology progresses, the less the human being can cope with cold, hot nature and elements. So it makes us perhaps more unadapted to the mother nature. But on the other hand, such knowledge is easy. Think about it one day, once upon a time, Somebody, probably it's in Wikipedia, who is that person, has found out that if you whip eggs with oil together, you can create mayonnaise. Mayonnaise has not always existed on planet Earth. Somebody discovered it. And many of you like mayo or dressings based on mayo, and you say that's very good knowledge. Even that can make your life 0.1% more happy because in 10 days in a year you've had something with mayo and you've been a bit more happy. No? So it has an impact, but this kind of knowledge has very little impact. But parapsychology is a science which is approaching head forward, is catching the bull by its horns, and it's approaching the most radical phenomena concerning human life, evolution, knowledge, perception. And because of this, parapsychology has been very loaded with blockages, with negative reactions. In the 1850s, when people like Charles Richet and... Uh, I don't know, William, Sir William Crookes and others like them, Camille Flammarion and others, were practicing psychic research and they were looking on phenomena like mediums, telepathy, hypnosis, uh, channeling, spiritual spiritist channeling and other such things. This was like, well, is it scientific? Is it not scientific? There have been many hoaxes and many uh, delusions in this domain. Then parapsychology came with a vengeance in the 60s and 70s, not coincidentally, during the coming of the great yogis of India and Tibet to Europe and to the West in general the glorious 60s, the hippie 60s and 70s, when even the Beatles were going to Rishikesh to study with Maharishi Mahesh Yogi and such uh, phenomena were uh, frequent. And then due to this opening, parapsychology became widespread. Some of the best books of parapsychology are published in the late 60s, early 70s, late 70s. This was the golden time of modern parapsychology. And where is the point? Because I had started from that and I had been going into slightly different connected subjects. The problem is always believing. People say, I have heard that there might be reincarnation or that we can go in the astral body and then we can live hours and hours out of our body like in a lucid dream or something and that I am not the body. If I would know this for sure, if I would experience it for two years every day, full on, full clarity, my life would be different. I would reevaluate if I want to get married if I want to have a career, if I want to have children, if I want to invest time in producing a lot of money, if I want to do this, if I want to do that. No, this is super essential knowledge. And that's why one of the consequences is that people 
do not have faith people do not believe normal people and i'm telling you it's happening more now than in the 70s and more now than for the real scientific minds in the 19th century who were open to such hypotheses and to such factors now people are becoming more and more blind we are experiencing currently what the yogis from india and tibet have called the end of kali yuga and in this end of kali yuga the quality of the human freedom and the quality of the human consciousness is terrible is at a terrible level and that's why people generally are very materialistic very selfish very skeptical they take things at face value they refuse to live by very high ideals real ideals not some social anarchism and some other bizarre things where your ideal is to make marijuana freely available to everybody forever that's not an ideal that's a social activism which can be good or bad only time will tell that so back to our story uh, parapsychology had a moment of shining again in the 20th century and today if you try to see how many chairs of parapsychology exist in the universities across the world how many books on parapsychology are being published every year how many professors doctorates and other things research how much money is invested in parapsychology openly less and less almost not at all to which a person who considers themselves logical would say so this demonstrates that parapsychology is a rogue science it does not exist no it doesn't demonstrate that it just demonstrates that we are like in the foundation of isaac asimov we become more and more ignorant we decay there are many many people who are functional illiterates there are many many people who have not read 50 pages in the last 365 days 50 pages of a book or of a documentary book you know it doesn't matter fiction or non-fiction no, they are the ignorance levels are decreasing we have people who finish high school and they can barely sign their name on a piece of paper if they are asked to read they read slowly and with great difficulty even their reading ability which is something which you train in the first grade of school even if their reading ability is pathetic in such conditions parapsychology becomes like something really really out there and because of this parapsychology tends to become forgotten it was like a door had been opened a little bit and people were told look it is possible to study amazing things to study them scientifically like okay you have mistrust that uh, uh, why not a teacher like swami vivekananda sarasvati is bullshitting you all these yoga all these shamans all these uh, kind of people they may be selling illusions but if there is a research which is done by wilhelm reich or by i don't know what other eminent uh, parapsychologist in this world then automatically you have to bend your ear to it you have to listen because hey this is science science talks like if science really has the evidence of something then you have to look into it because okay the conclusions might be slightly erroneous but definitely there is there some observation and some truth and some mathematics and some you know there is a solid research well parapsychology does that miracle in the 21st century with people who lost their confidence who lost, we live to such a terrible time that the main media not only that now they took out all the alternative healing methods from facebook and especially with this uh, 
funny pandemic of ours that they simply declared them rogue. But with everything, with everything, alternative opinions, like if you want to express something about, hey, chemotherapy, surgery, and radiotherapy are not really useful for cancer. They are a terrible solution to cancer. No, if you have cancer, you should do something else. There are 10 other things which work in the case of cancer, but not those endorsed by the medical establishment. Then you are a pariah. Then you are sidelined. You are immediately an outcast. And even things, institutions like YouTube, Facebook, and others, they will throw you out without asking questions even. No, if you are signal, signaled out like that. And that's very strange. No, you go on Wikipedia and you look at rogue sciences or fake sciences, pseudoscience, I think they call it, you know. And you find out that 90% of what we teach in Agama is, for Wikipedia, it's a pseudoscience. From astrology to pranic healing and from, I don't know, clairvoyance, opening of the third eye to whatever it is, it's all non-existent. This so-called modern science does not believe in the existence of prana or chi. They have declared that acupuncture is a pseudoscience because there is no chi. Because nobody has demonstrated the existence of chi in a sufficient way. That is completely not true. Because from Wilhelm Reich to a lot of others, the existence, the functioning of chi has been demonstrated amazingly. And if you build one of those devices, it works. It bloody works. We had people in Agama who built organic machines and all sorts, and they used them in their daily life. It was working. It was something useful which was working. Until now, we didn't have the possibility to build a cloud buster to start playing with the rain and weather uh, around here because that's a more expensive machine. It requires a bit of a more serious investment. So what am I trying to tell you here? I'm trying to tell you that parapsychology could turn the tables because it could eliminate the ignorance, at least for the people who are educated, the people who have a university degree or something, at least those ones would say, man, it's not known in the regular society, but there is this thing called parapsychology and I've studied it. I read a book, two books, three books written by scientists about it. And I have demonstrated, I've seen very clear scientific demonstration that a lot of things are not the way they are taught in school in, for the primary levels of education. Thus, in my opinion, parapsychology is for people that have doubts. If you have doubts, you should study parapsychology, you should read parapsychology, you should do experiments of parapsychology, you should maybe become a parapsychologist yourself if it's still possible, if anybody can give you an education or a degree in that, because parapsychology is going to show you so many exceptional phenomena that your disbelief, your unbelief will be healed. It's a cure for doubts and disbelief and such things. And I'm sorry to say it, but I can see very clearly because I'm sometimes thinking, why don't people, you know, if we present them with the truths from yoga, from metaphysics, why do some people don't react to it? You know, like it's clear, one and one makes two. You know, the things are logical. Especially in Agama, we don't teach nonsense yoga or nonsense spirituality. Or There are people in this world, this new age subculture is filled up with a lot of phantasmagoric people and uh, emotionally and mentally disturbed people who are preaching <clears throat> all sorts of insane things. And it seems that as the last 50 years pass, 
the more we are confronted with so-called these indigo children, generations, and others, actually most of them are autistic, schizophrenic, mentally disturbed severely. And this nonsense, this sort of bullshit spirituality, generically called New Age, it's becoming more and more insane, more and more far out, preaching things which are, you know, like, I don't want to use harsh words to qualify those things. And that's why with parapsychology, one can get back their faith because we see that some people know some things, you know, you teach them some things, and then eventually you say, you didn't do this. You didn't do that. Okay, one possibility is that some people are incapable. Exactly like people who say, I would love to make money, but I'm not good at making money. How many such losers have you seen in society? Many, many. The society is full of people who sleep on cardboard boxes and who are losers completely because of a variety of reasons. I don't want to condemn them in any way. I feel a great compassion towards the people who cannot materialize dreams, who cannot fulfill things. Those people believe that money would help them because they are ready to come and steal them from your pocket. Maybe they want to give the money on heroin or something. They still need it. No? And still they are incapable to make their money, to produce their money. Exactly in the same way, we can accept the thing that a spiritual teacher is presenting things to you about yoga, about spirituality, about metaphysics, and you are incapable to fulfill it. You say, I wanted to do two hours of yoga per day, but I'm a total airhead loser, and in the end I didn't do it. Incapacity is one explanation, but actually 90% of the people who get in contact with these things and they don't fulfill the great goals of spirituality, of yoga, of metaphysics, they don't do it because secretly they don't believe it. They simply say, this reincarnation thing or something, it's an interesting hypothesis. But, you know, in the end, I don't know if I'm 100% sure about it. And then I don't know if I should bet all my money on it. No, I don't know if I should put all my horses or my winning horses on that one. And therefore, in the end, the person remains in a limbo where if you ask them in the end of the life, they will say, well, uh, if I would have believed more, maybe I would have done something. This is the human curse that we don't know, we don't believe. Sometimes we believe things which are rubbish, and that's perhaps even worse. So I understand that some people are afraid to not start believing just about everything, because then you are in danger of believing all sorts of New Age rubbish, and that makes things worse. It's typical for Kali Yuga that we have so much fake news, so much disinformation, so much... Uh, fake information out there. So people are confused and they say, man, should I believe that there are spaceships orbiting the Earth and doing telepathy to some people? Should I believe this? Should I believe that? The people say, then I believe, I prefer to believe nothing. I prefer to believe what I see in my life. My family, my friends, my lovers, the food which I'm eating, this, that. A little bit of chemistry is obvious here and there. Because if you eat this and this and this, it generates cancer in your body. And if you take some natural vitamin C or something, it's good for your immune system or it does some, you know. And then people are reduced to very simplistic beliefs of daily life, very materialistic beliefs. And beyond that, Everything is like, well, I don't know. No, why should I invest my life into that when I have no certainty? But when you speak about Jesus, for example, just to take one of the most illustrious examples in the history of the earth, there you don't see any doubt. 
like Jesus is not coming without. I remember in the one of the episodes of Star Wars, the young Darth Vader, who is about to turn to the force of darkness, he is confronted with his own teacher, and he says, you made people turn against me, and so on and so on, and he says, those who are not with me, then they are my enemies. And the teacher, in a very good politically correct 21st century thing, Ewan McGregor or whoever was the teacher, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi or something, he says, only a Sith, like a dark lord, uh, only a Sith deals in absolutes. Like, you know, if you are not my friend, you are... But Jesus said, those who are not with me are against me. It was not Darth Vader who said it. It was Jesus who said it. And he dealt in absolutes. He said, if you are not with God, you are against God. So that statement is fake. We swallow it from a Walt Disney movie or whatever, whoever made that movie, that episode. You know, only a Sith deals in absolutes. You know, like uh, reasonable people, they have to be full of doubts and never state something, you know, like I'm ready to die for this. I'm ready to go my whole life for this. I'm going to put all my money into this. I'm going to put all my time and my energy into this. Only a Sith deals in absolutes, you know. The normal people should be confused and wishy-washy and not know what's right. No, that's exactly, exactly what I'm talking about. Jesus asks you to deal in absolutes. He says, be perfect as your Father in heaven is. One of my friends who is a psychologist who said, oh, but perfectionism is a disease of the spirit. No, perfectionism is a mental disease. Then Jesus is asking people to be mentally diseased because he says clearly, be perfect. Of course he knows you will not be because nothing is perfect in this world. But he says, try. Be obsessed with being perfect. So perfectionism is not a mental disease. Not at all. It's what Jesus would ask you to do. And that's why I'm telling you all these things to show that we live in a very confusing time. And parapsychology is one of the things that can rock the boat really hard. If you would read books of parapsychology, know the experiments which have been done. Amazing successful experiments, some of them. If you would be involved into this and see with your own eyes, then a lot of your belief would come back. When Wikipedia is telling you that chi or prana does not exist, you would tell them, go fuck yourself, I will not visit your site ever again, except for trite information. No? If they tell you that the only way to deal with cancer is chemotherapy, surgery and radiotherapy, then you tell them, go drown yourself. Your information is false. This is false information. It's not the truth. No? Those of you who say, why do you bring this up? It's in parapsychology, alternative healing with radiesthesia and other things. It's part of the parapsychology. No? Just there is a documentary made a year or two years ago by Ty Bollinger, which is called uh, Cures for Cancer or something like this, you know. Ways of the truth about cancer. Google it and get it if you can. It's 10 episodes or 12 episodes, you know, done by a guy who visited each and every, almost each and every country where there is, there is a parapsychological or alternative research on cancer. And he has spoken with people, with doctors that heal cancer, with no chemotherapy, no radiotherapy, and with patients which have this. Hours and hours, it's 20 hours of video with such people, in which you can see minimum 20 methods different from each other, which are used for healing cancer, and which have worked. And yet Wikipedia is telling you that those are pseudoscience. And then your friends and your relatives keep dying of cancer, because they try the killer methods of the modern medicine. And thus, it's the same with parapsychology. Parapsychology 
is giving you some knowledge about this kind of paranormal phenomena and the first thing which it will do it will increase your faith for me that's the problem the problem is that many of my students are wishy-washy many of my students are not determined I'm just uh, giving them example over example of things which are. They do yoga a little bit and they see it works. There is nobody who did yoga and didn't see how beautifully it works and what amazing results and sometimes mysterious results occur. But then when it comes to, you know, really taking a decision in your life, then for me, I'm happy to use parapsychology to call the attention of people, to tell them, hey, you don't believe me, you don't believe me. But have you ever heard about Thomas Gallen Hieronymus and his strange machine? Have you ever heard about Wilhelm Reich and his organ energy accumulators? Have you ever seen the hypnotic experiments of Anatoly, whatever his name was, Kaspirovsky, the Russian hypnotherapist? Have you ever seen this or that? Then people, you know, when they see it, first time they say it's a hoax. Second time they say this is also weird. Third time they start realizing, wait a second, what I have learned from my mom and dad, what I have learned from my teachers in school, and what I have learned from Wikipedia, may be false. May be false. And remember, if there is levitation or there is no levitation, if the human beings can produce anti-gravitation, or some, hum some beings on earth like birds or flies or something, if they can produce anti-gravitation, that's an entirely scientific techno field of interest. And the best outcome of it is that sometimes the people from Boeing Industries or something, they will start producing some anti-gravitational flying machines. No, the human anti-gravitational machines. Great! then we are going to fly flying saucers or we are going to do whatever we do in this world. That's a technological progress. But I'm talking here about something much more profound because parapsychology also deals with your soul, with clairvoyance, with lucid dreaming, with parallel universes, with the survival of the soul after death. Research scientifically and the breakthroughs are amazing. And if you get some clear answers about those, then you might drop everything and go into it. In extreme cases, don't forget that Buddha dropped his wife, his child, his parents, and his princedom for it. So it's not a joke. The human soul can be very radical about these things. But most often people say, eh, I have to have a safety margin. What if this orange guy is bullshitting me? You know, then, um, you know, I have to keep my safety. I have to keep something for myself because you cannot rely on everything that you hear and on everything. And thus, people are not giving it the whole hand. And not giving it the whole hand you are basically making one step forward, one step backward, one step forward, one step backward, like a person who is not determined, like a person who didn't take a clear decision, because the problem is the motivation. For me, this is the role of parapsychology. Parapsychology is an exceptional science, Part of it has very negative military uses and other things like discoveries from parapsychology are being currently used in very negative ways. But parapsychology for spiritual practitioners and for yoga practitioners is something which can give you a lot of faith. And if you have that faith via parapsychology, then suddenly you will be very motivated to do something else in your life. Just to give you a few bullets to tell you which are the fields of interest in parapsychology. Because parapsychology means a lot of things and some of them might tickle you formidably 
and some of them might be like, I don't know, this is not really my hot uh, subject today. So I'm going to give you about 10 bullets, like taglines, things which are research in parapsychology. And at the same time, as far as I remember, I'll try to give you some examples of what has been done. So one of them is strictly purely of the mind. I was reminded to put it here on the list because I think soon enough we're having a parapsychology, yoga and parapsychology workshop, which is focused exactly on this function, which is generally called clairvoyance. Many scientific names are given to different such things like precognition, to know the future, or retrocognition, to see images from the past, which in the language of yoga is having access to akasha, looking at possible slides of the future or looking at the things of the past retrocognition precognition retrocognition clairvoyance as a general term it's a word taken from french and it means to see clearly which implies to see what the normal ignorant person does not see either that means seeing people's auras or it means seeing people's future, or it means seeing a way of people getting healthy from a disease, like uh, it was done by um, Edgar Casey and others, or others, remote viewing, which is clairvoyance exerted in space, not in time. Precognition and retrocognition are about future and past, but remote viewing is about now, only not here, in other locations. Psychometry, you know, like people take an object in their hand and they can feel the energy of the owner of that object, especially if it's an object which is very private, like a wristwatch, a ring, a necklace, a pair of glasses, something. So such experiments have been amazing amazing some people have given a proof proofs over proofs of remote viewing of precognition of retrocognition which are amazing if you read the books of parapsychology and you take out all the hoaxes and you leave only the experiments done by parapsychologists in laboratories you are going to be amazed read the case of the jewish dutch clairvoyant called Gerard Croisset. There are books written about Gerard Croisset. Gerard Croisset had a level of clairvoyance which was flabbergasting. Like people would call him on the telephone in the 1950s in Holland, you know, and Gerard Croisset would pick up the telephone and he would say, yeah, I know what you want to ask me. It's about your brother. Your brother is dead. He is drowned in a lake. He is, uh, there is a red building near that lake. There are boats on the shore of that lake. This, like, he would give answers even without he receiving the question because in his mind, when he connected to the person, he instantly could see details like this. Like he could see glimpses. What, how relevant is it that there was a red building on the shore of that lake? Maybe not very relevant, but Gerard Croisset saw it, like a glimpse, like a hallucination. And then he said, well, I don't know. But people said, can't you just give me the name of the fucking lake? No, I don't know the name. It didn't come to me, but it came to me an image where I saw boats and the red building. You know, like he, again, was his clairvoyance was not the mind of God, but it was as much as a human being, a remarkable human being had. When you read about Jesus who said, go and you'll find a man, follow him, the owner of the house where he goes, you go to him and say, Jesus wants to do the supper, to take supper on Passover here with you. That's a different level. That's the mind of God. That's omniscience. Gerard Croisset was not omniscient which means all-knowing, in case you don't know the term omniscient. Gerard Croisset was clairvoyant, like he could see 
a hundred times more than a normal person can see. In our theory here in Agama, when we describe the energy of Ajna Chakra, I give an excerpt from one of the books which wrote about some of the experiments of Gerard Croisset with uh, Puthoff and Targ, Puthoff being Dutch and Targ being uh, uh, American, two parapsychologists who studied him thoroughly and they made very strict experiments with him. After you will read that, if you admit that Puthoff and Targ were not crazy and that they were proper scientists and they did university level experiments with Gerard Croisset, you're going to shrug your shoulders and you're going to say, why am I worrying anymore? Why am I living my life the way I'm living it? You know? Because simple experiments of Gerard Croisset, they demonstrate that what people believe it's free will, it actually can be predicted. And if it can be predicted with great precision, then what is our free will? Do we have a destiny? It means our destiny is written already. If it's written, why do we bother? Why do we worry? Why do we stress out? And it could go so far just because of this precognition of Gerard Croisset. Other and other experiments have been done which are amazing. The literature of parapsychology is full with experiments and successful experiments about precognition, retrocognition, remote viewing, clairvoyance, and other psychometric things. From here, we go to the second point of parapsychology, which is generally about extrasensory perception, clairvoyance being just like a form, mostly image and sometimes sound. But I, what about the other senses? And this is called ESP, extrasensory perception, and it is related with the existence of an energy aura or several energy auras, as the yogis call them. It is related with the domain of Kirlian photography, where two Russian scientists, husband and wife, Kirlians, the Kirlians, they actually manage to evidence with electronic format uh, a lot of these things. But there are also phenomena such as dermo-optical perception. Like some people, dermo means skin, yes? Optical, to see. Dermo-optical perception means to see with the skin. There are several people on the face of this earth which can read with the tips of their fingers. Not braille, not blind language, a normal book, a normal book. They, you have a book in a drawer, they put their hand in the drawer, they start touching the page, and they can read as you read with your eyes. Why aren't those people brought on television? Why isn't it made public? Because it's not one of them. There are several. Some studied in China, some studied in Russia, some studied in America, some studied in various other places. And like, why are we kept in ignorance about this? What's the meaning of the fact that we can read with the skin? How many million of blind people are out there? If they could be made to read with the skin, with the fingers, you would give them a new life. You would give them freedom. You would, it would be a great blessing for them. Let's speak strictly from a humanitarian standpoint, not just academic curiosity about these things. No, such people exist. No, and then synesthesia, that some people can see colors when they listen to music. I remember a story from Greece, from my students in Greece when I visited one time, I was doing some workshop there, that one of them had friends, a couple of Buddhist sympathizers, two Greek people who proclaimed themselves as Buddhist, Tibetan, Dalai Lama sympathizers, whatever, and these people had a daughter, a husband and wife. They had a daughter and they were, you know, fond Buddhists, but doing a normal life. And at some point they were listening, the daughter was like four years old and they were listening to some music. And this music, unfortunately, was disharmonious music. These people loved rock, 
jazz rock, some of this very disaggregating. It has a very bad effect even on plants and on human beings, this music. But people don't realize it and they keep playing it and they destroy themselves. They have a self-destructive thing there. And uh, the daughter goes and angrily switches off the music. No? And the mom says, hey, we are listening to music. And the daughter says, little girl, four years old, you know, she says, this is not music. It's a sort of a crap, you know, at which the mother says, come on, man, you are four years old. You don't know shit about music. You know, me and your father, we like this music. We grew up with this music. For us, it's good. And she says, no, this is terrible music. The little kid, you know, insists like, and then the mother says, okay, if you are so smart, then tell us how should good music be? And then the daughter gave an answer which concluded the story forever, I hope, for them. The daughter thought, was surprised. She didn't know how to explain it. And then she said, it should be more yellow. No, this is what says small things. You know, you don't need to go to a parapsychological laboratory for this one. It's an experiment which comes from a real family from Greece. And I'm sure we can find 30 other examples in the world which confirm this. So, synesthesia, dermo-optical reading and other things, all form of the extrasensory perception. Another field of telepathy, of, uh, parapsychology, the study of telepathy. I'm telling you conclusively as a, I would speak to a scientist or to an engineer. Telepathy has been absolutely demonstrated by one of the most, uh, one of the typical experiments, which is not a pleasant experiment, was by taking little rabbits, the children of a mother rabbit, taking them on a submarine under the polar, polar ice caps in the north, under, in, Ar in the Arctic Ocean. So the submarine was 1,500 meters deep in the water, thousands of kilometers from the laboratory. There is no known wave except probably neutrinos, flows of neutrinos or some cosmic radiation, which we don't know how to produce and we don't know how to modulate. No? So it, even if they exist, we don't know shit about them. They just cross through the Earth and everything. And uh, there's no known energy which can communicate in such conditions. And at given hours and seconds, they started killing the little rabbits one by one. Every hour or every two hours or something. And the mother was connected to electrodes in the laboratory and she freaked out every time when they killed one of the cubs. So we know that there is telepathy. Information can be transmitted from brain to brain, even among rabbits. But we don't know how. We don't know, because then you would not need telephone towers and 5G and so on. You just communicate with any brain, with any brain, any time. We don't know that technology. Those are not electromagnetic waves. But if you look on Wikipedia, there is nothing else but electricity, magnetism, gravitation, which we don't know what it is because Albert Einstein says it's a distortion of the space and time. And finally, uh, nuclear interactions, the strong and the weak, some of them have been eliminated. So there are like three or four basic energies. Well, none of them can explain, like a rabbit does not produce waves in the gravitational energy. A rabbit does not produce electromagnetic waves, and even if it does, they don't go 5,000 kilometers from deep underwater. A rabbit does not produce nuclear interaction, strong or weak. So basically, one thing from such a simple study, one thing is crushingly evident, and nobody wants to admit it. Nobody wants, that's the ignorance. That's exactly like, you know, the PCR test does not work for coronavirus, and everybody asks that you do it everywhere, in Thailand and in Romania and in America. Everybody does PCR tests, although it is scientifically evident that it cannot identify coronavirus or viral infections. So all the people who have diagnosed positive with coronavirus, it's been like flipping a coin. 
No, that's why many countries have given up testing discreetly, little by little, because what to do? You know, you don't have a good test for it. No, and but why don't they admit it? Why would it be so shameful to say, well, we don't have a good test for it? We'll let the scientists research. Let's see if we have. I don't know. It's some sort of psychology of the masses. The politicians don't want to allow the scientists to tell that they don't know because they are afraid that the masses will get alarmed and that they will have a revolution on their hands or something like this. And to control the masses, you have to pretend all the time that you know all the answers. We don't know. There is telepathy and we know it happens. And we don't know how it happens. With telepathy, there comes other communication, like there are people who communicate with animals. Either we speak about that buck, the horse whisperer, or we speak about other people. There are people who have incredible abilities in communicating with animals. There are measurements in electricity, like using machineries which resemble with the lie detectors. You put a lie detector electrode on plants, on living plants trees, bushes, and other plants, and they will give you reactions of fear, of pain, and other basic emotions. There is even communication with plants, done in the laboratory. I'm talking about electrodes and machines, not hippies that hug trees. There's nothing wrong with hugging a tree, if you feel like. But I'm talking about pure science. Here. Yeah. And I insist on this pure science because I want to tell to people, either you don't have faith and then let parapsychology give you that faith, or you believe, but you are actually not interested in some of this paranormal. It's fine. If you are not interested, it's fine. But you have to own it. You have to say, somebody told me about telepathy, clairvoyance, astral projection. I fully believed in those, I know that they exist, but I'm interested in cooking. I'm a foodie and I want to be a chef and the only thing I'm interested in is about the art of cooking. I want to be a grand chef in a five-star Michelin restaurant or something. That's my dream in life. And therefore, I know that some people do astral projection and it's not my baby, it's not down my alley. If you do that, then you own it and your soul will own the consequences of your choice. But the problem for most people is that people will always use the excuse by saying, I didn't know what to believe. Well, then study parapsychology seriously. Then we are looking into hypnosis, hypnotic phenomena, psychic surgery and other faith healing and other such things, amazing phenomena have happened there. I've had students from yoga who visited the controversial John of God in Brazil, who visited the controversial Stephen Thurov in England, and others. I've, I've known people who have been to Philippines and they had things extracted from their body and who had Filipinos coming to their country and extracting things under very strict control in Western countries. And the list could continue. Basically, what I'm telling you there, in hypnosis, in hypnotherapy, in psychic surgery and others, there happen a lot of inexplicable phenomena. It's just enough to see Anatoly Kaspirovsky dropping down dead on the floor hundreds of people, and 25% of them, they report instant healing of severe bodily conditions, just because going into a sudden hypnotic trance, which was meant to give healing. You see Kaspirovsky and others, they done more than him, doing hypnotherapy via television, via a monitor, via a sim, not the LCD of today, the old, uh, you know, black and white uh, televisions of the old day. I'm having a distressing signal on the screen here as I'm going to go out. Sorry for the technical interruption. So, okay, 
Uh, there will be a small interruption due to a technical problem. We'll restart in 30 seconds. Okay, but can I speak? They will lose something of what I say? Then make me shut up for one minute and restart. Okay, we continue. So in hypnosis, in hypnotic phenomena, and in psychic surgery and others like them, there exist incredible, like people under hypnosis, they have been able to read numbers on a piece of paper through an opaque body, like which were put behind somebody's body, and people could see through. No, and they were not clairvoyant or didn't have x-rays in the normal life, just because their mind was in hypnosis. No, theoretically, if you want to go really rogue, why shouldn't you go under hypnosis and try to predict the numbers from the lottery or the movements of the stock market or something? If, if there is clairvoyance, which is inducible to non-clairvoyant people, just by putting them into a state of hypnosis. That's why I'm calling your attention that whatever you are interested in, some people are using the parapsychology and they don't tell you. About seven years ago or something, there was a case, we were during a world championship in football, not the previous one, but the two times previous one, and some people from Germany, from somewhere, they made a very funny experiment. They were people from a zoo. And in that zoo, they had a squid, an octopus. And this octopus, it was known by some people that octopuses have hypnotic thing, that they, like the snakes, they hypnotize. So they said if it can hypnotize, maybe it's clairvoyant as well. And then they made, they concocted a very crazy underwater experiment where they were putting the flags on two poles. They were putting the flags of the two countries which were having to play the game the next day. And the octopus went to one of them, always chose one of them. And guess what? Its precision has been 100%. 100%. Like the fucking octopus managed to find out which team will win in football tomorrow. Imagine if you are a bookie. You can make a fortune from that. Imagine if you are a bet-obsessed person. No? Then everybody should have an octopus in their backyard. It's the most useful instrument, you know. Should you invest tomorrow in Bitcoin or in Ethereum? Should you invest tomorrow in Tesla or in Apple? No? It's like... If you would know this, your octopus could tell you. Guess what happened? As soon as the football championship was over and they realized the turmoil which this was going, in 20 days or so, the octopus was mysteriously dead. And we don't even know what's the type, the Latin name, like what's the species of that octopus, because I would go and buy one. No? And keep it in a glass aquarium or something no everybody who is smart would do you think that some people from the military or from the cia or from the kgb or something are having octopuses they do but they don't tell you yeah so that's why i say parapsychology is a very tricky science and it can remove the veil from a lot of things yes there is precognition even octopuses can determine future events. Yeah. So think again when you read the Wikipedia because they fill you up with bullshit and nonsense. Yeah. Again, I sometimes go on Wikipedia to find out what was the year of birth of Leonardo da Vinci. You know, there Wikipedia will give you concrete and reasonable information. But if you go to go there to find out a cure for cancer, Forget about it. Go on the site of Ty Bollinger, The Truth About Cancer. There you will find information taken from the field directly. So, when we go beyond this, we find a branch of parapsychology which deals with physical phenomena. And that's the most spectacular and the most difficult because this one 
is the one which is talking about physical phenomena. You know, like if you see that somebody levitates, then there are two possibilities. Either this is Chris Rock or whatever his name is, or David Copperfield, and they are magicians, and they are tied up with invisible strings and all this. It's a cheating of some sort. No? Because magicians cheat. David Copperfield never really walked through the Great Wall of China. Yeah? There's a dirty trick which you can find on internet already. It's on YouTube. How did David Copperfield fake that he walked through the Great Wall of China? Well, he made such a demonstration 30 years ago or something when he was in the acme of his... And others, he made the Statue of Liberty disappear. You know, it's like that Statue of Liberty never disappeared. You know, these people, they don't have paranormal powers. But exactly like this, then some people would produce physical effects. Some of them very clear, some of them not. Like Lozanov, a Russian researcher in the time of the Iron Curtain, in the time of the communism, they were making experiment. They had a woman who could, for example, separate, if you broke an egg on the table, she could separate the yellow part from the white part, from the transparent part, by just looking at it without touching it. She could just produce a separation in the fluid of an egg. And like this, this part of the parapsychology is called psychokinesis, that people can move things. There is a device put on the market by a Hungarian guy. I don't know if it's still on the market. And he's selling it unrealistically expensive, unfortunately. The device is about this size. It's just the size of a box, of a small box like this. And this device is called the Egeli wheel. E-G-E-L-Y, Egeli wheel. And this device is a device which allows you to experiment if you can produce bioenergy or psychokinetic effects between your hands. And I know people in yoga who have produced many such effects. And I know people outside of yoga who have a great psychokinetic power. Sometimes... Should I stop? Sometimes this psychokinetic power is expressed in other ways. For example, there is a research published by Robert Charou in French language in which they show such people who had influence on random number generators, electronic devices, like dice machines, throwing dice. Throwing dice is supposed to be random, not if you put your mind to it. If you put your mind to it, you can influence it. And that's why there are people who, when you flip a coin or something, they always win. They always win. Because they have a city on Manipura Chakra, which makes them influence machinery, metals, matter, chemistry, and other such things. Some of the yogis having this power, they have swallowed poisons, they have done all sorts of things, and they did not get affected by it. This is called generally psychokinesis, that kinesis means you move, kinetic, you move kinetic things with psycho, with the mind. Psychokinesis, and then there is the associated field of pyrokinesis. I remember a video from YouTube with John Chen, who passed away a couple of years ago. John Chen from Jakarta, from Indonesia. John Chen, a Chinese minority from Indonesia, he was able to take a piece of paper, crumble it like this, put, put it on the floor, put his hand to it, and in about 10 seconds he could make it burst into flames. You know, people gave him a newspaper, some, some normal paper, you know, which, and he could burst it in flames just by not touching it, just by keeping his hand 5 centimeters away from it and sending a special energy into it. And therefore, pyrokinesis in common parlance is sometimes called fire starting. That some people can actually produce fire. In the old India, the musicians of the Rudravina, they were asked to produce fire by playing music to a lamp, in front of a lamp, until the music became so fiery 
that the lamp burst into flames. Together with psychokinesis and pyrokinesis, there comes fire walking, which is on the limit of hypnosis, but also dealing with fire. And somebody told me just the other day about a guy doing uh, samosas or something in boiling oil in India, you know, the big wok full of oil in which you fry samosas, and the guy is handling the samosas and moving them with his bare hand. No? Any one of you crazy enough to put your hand into boiling oil? No, that's why I say. I have known people in India who are eating glass. They are chewing on glasses and pieces of glass. They are eating it like this. And swallowing it. No, you just, some people start bleeding just by looking at a broken window, you know. And it's like, where is, that's why I say, you know, there's this video with uh, guys from Goa or from Gujarat. Some uh, India has talent thing where there is a team of horrible people with a horrible Manipura who do that. They eat glass, they bend irons, they do incredible stuff. There you can see that what a trance can do. Of course, here comes together with it the phenomenon of levitation. This is one of the most controversial. We hear that Christian saints levitated. We hear that other mystics from other religions levitated. We heard that shamans and magicians levitated. Is it true? Is it just David Copperfield? Or the human being can produce anti-gravitation. The inventor of the jet engine an engineer called Henri Quande. Henri Quande, who is the inventor of the jet engine, so he is a real engineer. He, he made the calculations for birds and for flies. And birds do not have enough energy for flying. Theoretically, they should not fly. And flies, they, do, they have too much pressure per square centimeter. Aerodynamics say that if you have more than 100 kilos per square centimeter, the air will not stick to the aerodynamic surfaces and you cannot have the fly effect. Then you go into a different effect and you can fly. And the flies, the normal kitchen fly, the annoying kitchen fly, it has more than 100 kilometers per square centimeter when it flaps its wings. So theoretically, it shouldn't fly according to modern aerodynamics. But it flies damn well. Can do a lot of annoying things. And no, so, like scientifically, I'm talking to you scientifically, a man who was a genius in aerodynamics calculated that flies cannot fly and birds should not fly. He assumed that birds produce anti gravitation in a mysterious way, which we don't know, that part of the birds flying is the flapping of the wings, and 50% of the portents is generated by anti-gravitation. But we have no way of measuring that, we have no way of identifying that, except that when he made the calorie balance, the accounting of the birds, the birds didn't have enough calorie for flying. The amount of joules or units of energy, kilowatt hour or whatever you would want to measure it in, for making a bird fly was not justified even if you doubled its food. No? So like, how do the birds fly? Where do they get the energy? No? Could a bird teach us the secret of anti-gravitation? No? This is parapsychology is very uh, amazing, you know, because then if you know that a bird can produce anti-gravitation, then you are not surprised that Saint Joseph of Cupertino, an Italian Catholic saint, was flying like a balloon accidentally almost uh, in his monastery. No? Then it's acceptable. But then you understand, okay, if a man had real levitation, and this is not a fairy tale, and it's not a lie, and I know that parapsychology has demonstrated the existence of levitation, then the question is, what did Joseph of Cupertino do to deserve this gift? How did he get this gift? Why did he get his gift? And other monks who lived in the same monastery with him, they didn't have the same gift. That's why I'm telling you again and again, 
that here it's a matter of opening the mind and of acquiring faith. And believe me, for each of these subjects, I outlined about seven subjects until now, seven bullets, seven lines. For each one of them, the parapsychology books and other such books of mysterious phenomena, they give you scientific experiments, cases, not one, not two, many, many. And then you can see that we live in a mysterious world where we are being lied. We are not being told the whole truth about the world in which we live. And if we would be told the whole truth, then we might live our lives in a different way. We might make other options. One of the most radical branches, and one of the most difficult, of course, in parapsychology, is studying the phenomenon of materialization and by location. Materialization refers to materializing objects, like by magic, only it's not stage magic, and or materializing one's body, which makes disappearing, appearing. And when that one is possible, it leads to the phenomenon which has been notified, like parapsychologists have been told. Be careful, there is a guy who lives in Sri Lanka who is called Yoga Swami. And Yoga Swami has been seen in three places at the same hour and impossible to travel between them. Like one was in Londa, London, one was in Jaffna in Sri Lanka, and one was in the same yogi was seen by three of his disciples at the same hour on the time zones of the earth. Like taking into account the time zones, they three of them saw him at the same hour. How could a man appear in three different bodies in three different places? That's what I'm talking about. Well, how many yogis who could materialize, dematerialize, or do by location do you think the parapsychologists have ever studied? None. None. They have small cases here and there, but there is, so that's why this is a super difficult, because it refers to a phenomenon which is radical, which is out of this world completely. And then we get to something which is happening all the time, and one of my workshops, I think even in this weekend or something, is about this. Parapsychology studies at another bullet, out-of-the-body experiences, lucid dreaming, the survival of the consciousness after physical death, the near-death experiences, the reincarnation, the apparitions, the mediums, the hauntings, the ectoplasm, the electronic voice phenomenon, the transvision phenomenon, poltergeist phenomena, and others. This, which is very big, and here there is an abundance of cases. Here you can read eminent scientists who have studied some of these things amazingly beautifully. Even Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the man who wrote um, Sherlock Holmes, the author of Sherlock Holmes, was a writer. In the last 15 years of his life, he became a parapsychologist and a, a metaphysician. And he simply said, this is way more important than Sherlock Holmes and this kind of, this is a joke, you know. This is what it is. And uh, you, there are videos interviewed, he's interviewed in the early 19th century, where he is, uh, in the early 20th century, sorry, on video, where he's asked to speak about this, what he discovered. And it's amazing. No, because this is a man of great culture, of great education, who followed scientific protocols. It's amazing what, they, what he has to say. And uh, therefore, this is unfortunately one of the subjects which has created a bad reputation for parapsychology. Miss Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, a Swiss doctor, she just started making psychological therapy and interviews with people before death, people who were before dying. And they simply eliminated her from the scientific world. She created a branch of science, thanatology, but as soon as she started analyzing some of the conclusions of thanatology, you don't hear, go in any hospital and say, I want to speak with your thanatologist. 
There is no thanatologist. It's recognized by the World Health Organization, but there is no thanatologist. Exactly in the same way, a Spanish-French doctor called Alfonso Caicedo, he created a new branch of psychosomatic healing, which he calls sophrology, a sort of self-hypnosis healing. It's accepted by the World Health Organization, it's recorded as branch of medicine. Try to go to your hospital or to your medical university and say, I want to speak with a professor in sophrology. There is none. You will not find sophrologists, you will not find thanatologists, except maybe there are five in the whole world and you don't know where they are. They keep a very low profile precisely because of the reactions which their work is triggering in people. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross got, she was also very gifted for this field, like she had some intuitions and then she verified it scientifically and it worked. And Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, she obtained amazing results. She was so efficient in dealing with the psychology of the dying people that super rich people were sending private jets and were paying her hundreds of thousands of dollars to just come and take care of the dying people in their family, their mother or something like this. You know? And so she had results. It was known, but scientifically she was thrown out of the scientific world completely precisely because this research is stepping on some toes and first of all is stepping on the toes of the human ignorance. Therefore, as long as you speak about out-of-body experience, out experience and lucid dreaming and astral projection, it's weird. How many people have heard about Robert Monroe and the Monroe Institute and uh, the book which he wrote, Journeys Out of the Body and stuff like this? Very few. After he died, it started declining because the person inspiring the whole thing, who could do the whole thing, he was not there and the followers were just theoreticians, unfortunately. But the conclusion of the astral projection and this is, if you can exist two hours outside of your body, then maybe you can exist two hours after your body dies. After your body dies, you that part of you which was going out of the body, it can still survive. What if it can survive two days? What if it can survive two million years? Like we don't know. No? And this is the survival of the consciousness after the physical death. And with this you have crossed the red line. Because you have entered in the field of religion, metaphysics and others, mysticism. And then the scientists will simply throw you out and say, no, 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 you are a professor in the university and you study scientifically, allegedly, the survival of the consciousness of the physical death. And no, 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 this is, you are bollocks, you know, you are nothing, you know. This is where it goes. That's why parapsychology is such a difficult and rare science, but actually it has gathered facts which, has, which are mind-blowing. That's why I advise you to read. Yeah? Uh, and last but not least, I think they are asking me to do a workshop on this next season in 2022 sometime. There is the branch. I may have forgotten one or two, but I tried to put in my mind like the directions in parapsychology. We are speaking about radiesthesia, the ancient science of dowsing, the pendulum, the use of the pendulums and other radiesthetic devices, and last but not least, this amounts in the ultimate science of these invisible energies called radionics. Radionics is the science of the future, really, and some people are actually using it, but mostly in purposes of espionage military and others because they know its efficiency but it's simply amazing so radiesthesia has so many implications because uri geller was using using it to find oil in africa for oil companies who paid him fat money usually he was getting paid a hundred thousand dollars per oil location that he was finding for them and it, start, it can start with that, but
but it can also be used for medicinal science, mediradiesthesists and radionics, like Abrams, um, Hieronymus, and others, Delaware, and others. They were using this uh, science for the healing, for the diagnosing and the healing of the human body. Please, I'm not talking about electric measurements, you know, like, there are two scientists called Burr and Rabbit. They, in the, during the World War, during the Second World War, they did research in uh, the eastern seaboard of America, and they discovered the fields of energy around the electric body, which are not used even today properly. No, we, they read the book, which is called Blueprints for Immortality, and you will see it. Fully scientific book. That's not parapsychology. That's biological, bioelectric research on the electricity around the human body. Like there, we're not dealing with any mysterious phenomenon, although the consequences of that are very mysterious. Like your electric field in the area of the throat changes 48 hours before you get a sore throat and a flu. So your sore throat is produced by some change in energy, not because physiologically you are okay in your throat 48 hours before you actually have a sore throat. No? So it leads to very shocking, it's on the borderline with parapsychology, but it's not parapsychology. That's still normal science, and even that one is suppressed, largely. Wilhelm Reich discovered ways of harnessing the prana with machines. Wilhelm Reich was not a yogi. He was not a shaman. He was not a magician. And he learned scientific ways of harnessing the prana, which he called orgon. He didn't even know the Sanskrit name prana for it, or the Chinese name chi. Maybe later somebody told him, you know, this thing which you call orgon, it's what the Hindu yogis are calling prana or something. So I'm telling you all these things to open your eyes and to make you understand that with parapsychology you could see amazing things. Just if you want to start from somewhere to read, there is an old book, both of them are published in the 1970s, if I remember correctly. That's why I said that was the time when really there was a surge of interest and even Hollywood made a movie about... Uh, this woman who was possessed by an invisible spirit, real case studied and researched by the parapsychologists from an American university. There is a Hollywood movie which is called The Entity, if I remember correctly. It's a bit scary because, of course, the Hollywood has to sell it and to make it spicy, but actually it reflects a real case from universities. But if you want to read a couple of books where to start from, I would recommend you start with um, a colorful book by Christopher Hills, an American researcher, a more an enthusiast than a researcher, which is called Supersensonics. Christopher Hills, Supersensonics. It's not for sale, you find it only on second-hand bookshops, but today everything is on internet, and you'll probably even find it in digital format. And the other one, which is the real scientific acme, like, you know, I could give you the books on Gerard Croisset and uh, the magazine Sci International. And there were so many things written, especially in the 1970s and 80s. But here is what I think is one of the most solid scientific books written on parapsychology in general. It's called Future Science. It has three authors or four. One of them is Stanley Krippner, an American psychologist. And this one, the second of them, is called John White. I don't know, I don't remember the name of the other two. If you want to see it, something very colorful, which is written by scientists and try to explain paranormal phenomena through quantum mechanics and things like this, it is a wonderful brochure with pictures. So it's easy to read even for people who don't read too much. But it has comments under which are full-on quotes from great scientists. It's, um, 
It's a book written by Bob Tobin, Frank Sarfati, and uh, Fred Allen Wolf. Fred Allen Wolf is the mad scientist who appears in What the Blip Do We Know in that documentary. Um, they wrote a book again in the 1970s, which is called Space Time and Beyond. I can tell you only this, if you read these three books, you will be lost into the universe of parapsychology and you will start looking for other and other literature simply because you will notice that we are being lied. We are not being told what scientists have discovered and done. And it's not all of it because they all became military secrets. I don't know if the military of any country has a special unit which changes the weather by using the cloudbuster of Wilhelm Reich. I hope that maybe at least some people on this planet use that. No, I don't know. Maybe they are so ignorant and so stupid that they just ditched it. And therefore, either somebody in a black way is using or misusing these things and they are concealed because of manipulation. Nevertheless, I as a yogi want to call your attention that these things are concealed because of the wall of silence. And in the moment when you see 20 such things, not one, not two, but more and more and more, eventually something breaks in you, a certain skepticism, it breaks in you, and then you see that we live in a very mysterious world. There are forces in the chakras, energies of nature, which modern science doesn't know a word about, doesn't use them at all. We don't know what makes animals and people crazy on full moon. Because neither the gravitation nor the electromagnetic field nor the nuclear fields vary too much when it's full moon. The variance of those fields is like 1%, 0.1%, something insignificant. It's just that when there is full moon, you can say that the full moon when it's clear sky, but remember the full moon is working in a cloudy country when it's cloudy for two, ma two weeks in a row and still there is a full moon behind the clouds and it still acts. The full moon generates polarized light. It reflects the light of the sun and it reflects it in such a way that it's polarized, not 100% polarized light, but it's polarized light to a large extent. Do you know? What does polarized light do to people, you know? Especially when you don't see the moon because it's hidden by the clouds. So there is no explanation why the full moon drives the whole planet crazy. But it does. It's known statistically. That's why I'm telling to you, open your eyes. Open your mind. Don't live in a world of sufficiency. Because this world of, ah, kind of, we know, and so on. It's a beautiful scene in uh, the Steven Spielberg movie, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, where a guy is irradiated by some UFOs, and he gets, he starts having visions, and he starts doing, you know, and he is completely obsessed with it, and he starts having trouble with the military, and we so on, and he starts having initiatives of going to Dakota, to North Dakota, where the aliens were supposed to come, and so on, and his wife wants to divorce him, wants to lose him, wants to, you know, and his wife is like, you know, and, and the guy says, but you have seen it with me, or at least you are trusting that I, I've touched those things, I've seen those things, he means UFOs, He's like, what are they? You know, it's like, I have to know, like, my life cannot be the same. And the wife gives a typical American stupid answer. Not the Americans are stupid, but if you want to express stupidity in American language, that's how she says, eh, it's one of those things. No. If people tell you that levitation is one of those things, and orgone energy is one of those things, no? And then, then those people, I'm sorry to say it, in my, whole, in my vision, they are irrecuperable. In this life, you cannot do any. Maybe if they get hit by the lightning, they will wake up. No? Because otherwise, I'm asking people, first of all, don't be flat. Don't believe me. 
I am a person who has looked into parapsychology. I have seen devices. I have read books. I have seen and understood lots of paranormal phenomena, not to mention that I have done yoga for a number of years and I have seen many things. Maybe the wall of silence does not allow me to show or do or whatever some things because that's not the purpose of my life. That's not the purpose of people's existence. No? Jesus, who was a gazillion times bigger than all of us put together, he did some miracles and many of them are still controversial and people have said, did it really happen? I didn't see it clearly. I don't understand or something. So that's not the point. The point is for you to see that such things are recorded, scientifically studied, sometimes rationalized, and therefore they will wake you up. We, we are being lied to and the Hindus call that Maya. The whole universe is conspiring to hypnotize us and to keep us in a state of ignorance where we see only a very limited reality and we think that's the reality that we have to follow. But actually, when you think about hypnosis and telepathy and clairvoyance and life after death and levitation and pyrokinesis and uh, radiesthesia and radionics and all the things which I mentioned, life could be very, very different. And then, if people would be given those premises, then you can be sure that many people would have taken other decisions in life. Many people take decisions which are not informed. You need to take informed decisions. Either it's about taking a vaccination for this virus or not. You have to take informed decisions. The same thing is about your life. Hey man, if I would have been told since I was 16 years old that this and this and this are real, I would have lived my life in a completely different way. So I did a satsang on parapsychology, both because those of you who want to study it with yoga, you have some workshops in Agama where we give you samples of some of these fields, not all of the parapsychology, but also because I consider that parapsychology is an instrument of awakening of your mind and soul. It did that for me. When I read when I was a teenager and later when I read about certain truths and experiments, you know, like there was a yogi from India who was flown, they, they did fly him to New York to the, Rockefeller, to the Rockefeller Institute and there they buried him under the earth and he did not breathe for one week. This is not an experiment done in Lonavla in India where you can say that somebody was smart and they cheated. This is a naked yogi with electrodes over his body who was buried in a controlled box with a sentry on top of him like a person guarding the place and monitored with electrodes for breath, oxygen, electricity, brain, EKG and everything for seven days. And this guy stayed like a statue under the earth without breathing and with his heartbeat stopped. And we are told that if the brain doesn't get oxygen for five minutes, you die. This guy apparently didn't get oxygen for seven days. And he did not die. He came back and he was a normal person again. No? Such exper I could give you examples of this. So many experiments which have been done and which will rock your boat. No? Everybody is using a diesel. I have a diesel engine on my car. You know? And the inventor of the diesel engine, professor, diesel engineer, diesel, a solid German engineer, he announced that he had built an engine running on water which is the dream of these people today with Greta Thunberg. You know, if we could make, a, we stop a burning a fuel and making a, it has been developed before the Second World War. 
by diesel who is having a solid reputation you know like nobody can say that diesel was a hippie a new age hippie you know and diesel went to newcastle or someplace in england where there was a congress on thermodynamics and engines and then he was supposed to show the engine to the press when he came back and on the road back he disappeared from the ship but nobody in his laboratory or his assistants or somebody nobody found the engine or the draft of the the technical design of the engine it went all like this no can we suppose that diesel lied and then he threw himself overboard from the boat just because he was ashamed that he lied that was not the kind of person that we're talking about so what's the mystery there no and that's, I want you, first of all, to realize that we live in a very mysterious universe. And there is a book called Pendulum Power, by, if I remember correctly, by Gary Null. Also in the 70s, that was the time when parapsychology had a moment under the sun. And then either it was hushed down or the wall of silence has suppressed it in a mysterious way. Gary Null describes how the American government confiscated his passport. He was becoming a very dangerous person and he was under supervision from the FBI and so on because he made the mistake. He went to the military in the Pentagon and he made a demonstration that with a pendulum on a world map he could find the position of the nuclear submarines of America underwater. And that's the most classified secret because if you know where a submarine is, you can destroy it. Submarines are very vulnerable machines. You can bomb them under the water and they will, so the, sub, the whole power of the whole nuclear submarines is that, that they can emerge to the surface unexpectedly in any point of this world and the second before you didn't know where they were. Therefore, the whole secret of the nuclear submarines is their position. That's the most classified secret for the Navy. No? And this guy could find their numbers, their latitude and longitude with a pendulum. And he did it for all of them and they verified it was right. And then they took away his passports and he said, man, you'll never leave America. If you can do this thing, we don't know how you do it, you know. But if you can do this thing, you are, you know, maybe we should kill you, actually, you know. Then he realized that he didn't go to find some interested people. He went and found himself some enemies because they didn't want to know about this. Konstantin Raudive recorded voices. He recorded the voice of his dead mother on an electronic device. Then this transcommunication, as it's called, or voice recording and image, it went audio, it went video. They developed, there are so many experiments. There is a Hollywood movie which is called uh, White Light, I think, or White Noise, I forgot. Yeah? And this, in this movie, you see a guy who is doing transcommunication with the dead. There are many people who do it. The effects, the, the report in the parapsychological magazines are amazing. You never learn in school that there exist electronic devices which could make you hear voices or see images from people that are dead. Then if you can, what the fuck is that? Konstantin Raudive was Lithuanian or something, a Lithuanian engineer in electronics. And in the beginning he thought it was an accident and that the voices were coming by radio waves, a sort of parasite radio wave interference from some that somebody was playing a prank. He did everything, Faraday cages, he went into basements, he went to, like he built the most sophisticated electronic equipment to just find out that actually he got voices and later other people got images on TV screens with inexplicable. Now, I have known personally, I have spoken personally with a man who was doing these experiments and who got some incredible results, incredible results, no? but they never became public. That man refused to make it public. Eventually, he destroyed all his equipment because he was paranoid that the governments will use him for espionage. No? And uh, he wrote a manuscript book, like he never published it. He just wrote it on computer no? as a file. I have a copy of it. You know, it's written in Romanian language because this guy was Romanian. About the results which he obtained. And when you read it, you're like, what? No? And you can see, this is a 
super electronics engineer. It's not a hippie. It's, not, it's a Capricorn guy, very pragmatical, very down to earth, who had children with health problems, couple of marriages. Well, like, you know, a man down to earth who worked with electronics all his life and so on, you know. He was just a little bit of a genius and he has done some incredible stuff. So, Anti-gravitation, I remember even reading in a Bangkok Post or one of them that in 2003 or something, Boeing, the famous company from America, announced that they are going to include anti-gravitation devices on their airplanes according to the studies of a Russian academician that they are collaborating with some Russian scientist who develops anti-gravitational effects and that they might come on their planes soon. And then suddenly, never heard a word about it. Somebody in the PR department of Boeing was probably fired because of this blunder, because he shouldn't have mentioned it. No? This was not something which you mention. But in 20 years, they would have obtained the device. But it's not on the Boeing airplanes. So where is it? Who is dealing with it? And how? No. Wilhelm Reich, I mentioned it already. Um, Anti-gravitation, I mentioned. Just, I don't know if you'll ever hear about the Hieronymus machine. To see radionics and radiesthesia. I, I, I'm almost tempted to tell you the story of radionics, but is of uh, Hieronymus, but it's very late. Maybe some other time, maybe in a Q&A somewhere. Thomas Gallen Hieronymus, try to Google the, this name, Thomas Gallen Hieronymus and his machine, Hieronymus machine. Maybe you'll find something on the internet. The radionic machines, the devices of Delawar, of Peregrino Hermeti, the, the pyramid energy. Why are there three books on pyramid power written in the 1970s? There is nothing written in 2020. What the, can the pyramid power, for example, influence positively the COVID virus, the SARS virus? Because the pyramid energy influences in a positive way for man, all the microorganisms, all the bacteria, all the mold, all the fungus, all this, they are eliminated by pyramids. Does it have an antivirus effect as well? Maybe the best cure for SARS-CoV-2 is that we sleep on the pyramid like scaffolds or something? No, that's why I say, where is the pyramid power? Has it been demonstrated wrong? But there is a patent in the pre, in the communist Czechoslovakia, in which they demonstrated the patent exists that it can sharpen razor blades. It modifies the position of the crystals of steel. If you take a used razor blade and put it on a pyramid, tomorrow morning it's sharp again, without you having to polish it. You cannot polish razor blades, they are extremely thin. And, no? But the crystals move back to the original position just because it stays under the pyramid. What's the scientific explanation? None. Zilch. There is nothing which can justify that a cardboard pyramid, a pyramid made of cardboard, can sharpen a razor blade. But it can do way more than that. Way more than that. Much more exciting things than sh resharpening a razor blade. You know? The water energies. Victor Schauberger, try to read the research of, about Victor Schauberger and his water research. You will fall over your back. This was an Austrian scientist who was looking and he could not understand how the salmons and the trout in a mountain river in Austria, they were managing to stay stable in a quick flowing water. Cold water, so the fish didn't have much energy because it was cold. The blood is cold. Yeah? And the fish was staying like this and just vibrating or making a specific movement, very little, and the water was flowing really fast, and the fish was not getting carried into the ocean by the water. And then suddenly, the fish made one movement, and it was two meters upstream. What kind? How? Victor Schauberger demonstrated some incredible effects on the water, and how the water should be for drinking, Henri Quande, the guy who made research on the flies and the birds, he was 
he re realized that the snowflakes are different from country to country. When you put under a microscope a snowflake from France and a snowflake from Hungary, they are different. You don't believe it, but the research is, and probably somebody has uploaded it on internet already. There's a whole study of Henri Quande of the snowflake. The snowflakes from Japan, they are wildly different. It's the same water. So why does the water crystallize in ice with different patterns? It always crystallizes with a hexagonal pattern. Like all the snowflakes are like a six-pointed star, like the spokes of Svadhisthana Chakra. Six. But that's, that's the only thing which is common between them. Other things are not. Masaru Emoto with his energies in the water that you just write something or bless the water and the water changes its characteristics. And not to mention homeopathy. That you just dilute, 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 dilute. And in the end, the chemicals are zero. No, like if you make a dilution of sulfur. When the sulfur reaches to the 100 dilution, or the fifth 500 dilution, there is not an atom of sulfur left in a bottle of homeopathic sulfur, 5C. 500, C from 100. Yeah? No. There is not an atom. And yet you take sulfur 5C and it heals a lot of things in your body. You get a lot of violent reactions. You can get fever, diarrhea, boils and pimples. You know? And you've put in yourself just water. That water is not just water. What are the energies of water? No, we deal with it. Our body is 75% water. Healing technologies, polymeric water, magnetic therapies. Why does color therapy work? You know, at least if you take the therapy of Royal Raymond Rife, Royal Raymond Rife doesn't do parapsychology. He has observed viruses under the microscope, which today we can't do, because he built the strongest optical microscopes built by any man ever in history in the 1940s. And he realized that the viruses have, having a spiral of RNA, they have a resonance like a bridge. They have a mechanical resonance of destruction. And if you project a certain radio wave of a certain frequency, the molecule will vibrate. And if you hit the exact resonance frequency, it will burst. So basically, since all the viruses of hepatitis or whatever, all the dengue, dengue fever viruses, they have one same structure. There is one frequency which kills all the dengue viruses in your body in maximum 30 minutes. That's not parapsychology. It's amazing science, and that's also hushed down. There are very few people who can offer you today a rife machine and the correct frequencies of that for alternative healers. So, not to mention about Lacho, Lakovsky, and the zapper of Hulda Clark. People searching for cold fusion. There has been a breakthrough in the 80s that some people allegedly, or ni early 90s, they discovered cold fusion. Two people from the Utah University in the United States. I met people who were doing research on it every day in their apartment. Physicists were living in an apartment they had a company by which they made money, and the other half of their life was spent having a huge equipment in their apartment, in the back room, where they were trying to obtain cold fusion at normal temperature. And this, of course, hopefully they wouldn't go wrong and explode the whole country or something like this. Synergetics. You know that when you... How much energy does a gramophone give to these funnels from the old days? These funny funnels we used for the gramophones, for playing gramophone plates. The energy which is given is given by the wire and by the rotation of the disc. This vinyl disc is making a needle vibrate. Can you measure what energy is in this needle? How many watts? What is power, not energy? How many units of energy you put in this? Yes. With an audiometer, can you measure the audio energy which comes from the gramophone funnel? Yes. Guess what? The energy which comes out of the gramophone funnel is much, much bigger than the energy which goes in the needle. So even a gramophone is a mystery because it multiplies the energy which no machine should do. I'm not saying it's a, it probably sucks that energy from somewhere, but how? 
Why doesn't anybody analyze this when it's a scientific, simple fact? No. The Tesla coil. Tesla demonstrated that there is, if there is one big Tesla coil working somewhere on this planet, then theoretically everybody on the planet can have free energy by resonance from that Tesla coil. Even if you are in New Zealand, you can suck energy from a Tesla coil in North America, and that energy is for free. Today we speak about free energy, not to burn coal anymore. Why doesn't anybody start using the Tesla equipment? No, Tesla is famous just because Elon Musk is doing electric cars and the big business out of it. No, Others and others, you know, I, I could continue Filipov, whose theorems I studied in mathematics, you know, I studied the mathematics of Filipov, but I didn't know that he claimed that he invented a device which could send the mechanical effects of an explosion by radio waves to another location. He basically thought he had conceived the total weapon. You know? And Lenin sent the KGB or whatever they were called in those days immediately, like, get me that invention of Filipov. And they found Filipov dead, the laboratory ravaged, no trace of this formidable weapon or how it works. It can, I can tell you many, many other stories which are mysterious like this, with Diesel who disappeared and others. There's a guy called Suvorin. Suvorin wanted to publish the best book on fasting, that fasting can heal cancer, like 100 years ago. He went to Paris to publish the book, because in those days France was the hub of most publishing of these interesting things. You know? And they found Suvorin dead in his hotel, with his head inside the oven, asphyxiated by gas, and the book had disappeared. But guess what? Nobody published that book five years later under another name. No, like, if you steal a book, you steal it to publish it. You, know, you steal it to take the idea to get the money. Suvorin was dead, the book disappeared, and the method of healing cancer by fasting was lost. Where is it? No, did the aliens steal it? Did the CIA steal it? Did Adolf Hitler steal it? Who, steal, who stole that book? No? And for what purpose? And the list, I could continue and continue and continue. I, uh, I have seen with my own eyes people having done not necessarily parapsychological things, but alternative science, which because I don't think that Diesel did a parapsychological device because there was nothing psychological about it. It was just new science, breakthrough in science. But many of these alternative science things, they may be connected with a human being, like there can be anti-gravitation out there, there can be anti-gravitation which happens in the human being. There can be transmission of information, there can be telepathy inside the human being, and other such things. So, as a conclusion, I want to recommend to all of you, if you feel that life is too boring and if you want to see how much you are being lied about these things, start studying parapsychology, read the future science of Stanley Krippner, or read the supersensonics of Christopher Hills, or read some others which I have recommended around here. S Google some of the names which I have mentioned, and you are going to see that we live on very thin ice, that actually there is a gray, there are many, many great mysteries, I didn't mention many, many other types of mysteries, which are there, and in this way, uh, you have to live your life a little bit more boldly, a little bit, because life is not just a flat thing, which as Shivananda said, is just eating, sleeping, or creating. A little laughter, and a lot of tears. If life is that, then we go to Jean-Paul Sartre, who said life is so fucked up that you should all commit suicide today. You know, it's like, that's how bad life is. Now, how boring is it? Where does it go? And the students asked him, why don't you show us the way? And he said, well, there has to be a prophet who stays and preaches for the cause. So I will stay and preach suicide and you guys do it. When he died, there were a lot of French students who committed suicide on his grave. 
so that the French police had to put a patrol to prevent people from coming and doing suicide in that graveyard on the tomb of Jean-Paul Sartre out of sympathy because in a certain way he had been so right because life without spirit without mystery without knowledge without evolution it's not worth living it's just a drag you know the fact that you can eat a nice mashed potato today and say yeah but today was worth living because I had delicious mashed potatoes you know it's like that that's all eating sleeping and procreated I slept good, I had some great food, and I had great sex with my partner. Oh, so life is worth living. No? But Shivananda says, if that's all there is to it, it's not worth living it. You know, it's like it's, it leads nowhere. That's why life has a meaning when you are a spiritual seeker, when you are an investigator of mystery, when you are focused on either knowledge or love. These two things give meaning to life and I want you to I want to encourage you to study parapsychology and to wake up to see what kind of mysterious reality we live into. I can say that somehow the creator, sometimes somehow God, has placed pointers. Like we are kept in Maya and in ignorance, but for those who want to escape from the reservation there are also pointers which call your attention. They ring a bell and they tell you it's not what you think it is. And I hope that for you, parapsychology, the workshops in Agama and others, they can mean opening a door to this fantastic world and they can make you live your life in a much more bold and big way. With this, let us conclude for tonight. Thank you all for joining in talking about the connection between spirituality and this formidable science which is parapsychology. I hope you will have the right questions in your life, questions to yourself, to me, to whoever is expert in this, to learn more. Enough for tonight.